All right, welcome back YouTube. Another quick video I wanted to put up just to respond to just a couple questions I received lately uh, with all the smart home tech stuff that I've reviewed and all these internet of things with all the different devices I have. Uh, uh, I lo you know, on any given day I could have up to about 60 different Wi-Fi enabled devices. And that kind of depends on, you know, whether I'm watching a movie or not. Some things are hardwired or sorry, a network connected device. Some things are hardwired, some things are Wi-Fi enabled, a lot of the TVs are Wi-Fi enabled, the Chromecast, Googles, really depends on what I'm doing, but I can have up to 60 devices. Now, um, one issue you are going to have with any um, uh, residential type router, no matter how good it is, and if you know more than me on this subject, by all means let me know uh, your experience is stuff. Um, I finally got my network stable because I was having a real issue with things dropping on and off. I mean, having to power cycle things, it was really upsetting me for the most part because you have all these cool de devices, all these things supposed to make your house smart. My house became really dumb. And so uh, what I want to show you, some people say, what is in your network closet? And I want to show you right now what I have and just give you a quick rundown of why I did it and just some of the things that I have in there, okay? Um, so throughout the house, there are smart TVs. I have... Um, in the house right now as far as smart TVs are concerned. And some of the TVs I've had in the past weren't smart, so to use Netflix like that, I used the Chromecast. So right now, in this in this house, I have uh, four televisions, soon gonna be five when I put the hot tub in out back, and I'm gonna actually wall mount an outdoor TV and build a waterproof um, summer TV I could put out there. I wouldn't leave it out year round, uh, but my sister gave me an older TV she doesn't use. They don't do anything with it anymore. So when I get the hot tub, I'm going to mount it on the wall. And I'll do a whole video. I'll do a smart backyard series, uh, you know, down in, in the future. But uh, I have those. On every one of those TVs have a Chromecast. Some of the TVs are smart. They have their own Wi-Fi uh, device built in. Some are hardwired. Uh, I have Chromecast audios in each room. Uh, I have the Google Homes. Uh, one Google Home Mini, two Google Homes for the audio, you know, uh, for home control. I have two Alexas in the house uh, for audio and home control as well. I have Z-Wave lights. I have LifeX bulbs. I have five li or six, seven LifeX bulbs. I have uh, one magic light bulb. I have three LEDs. I mean, the list goes on and on. So, needless to say, I thought by getting a super robust router, my problems would be solved. This is before I got all these devices. I just wanted to get something that was better rather than my the one that came with my internet, right? So I went with an ASUS uh, ACRT3200. Six antennas, tri-band, and you know, it worked for a while and then I started having problems. So I never really got to the point whether it was something wrong with the router or not, but what I found was once I started moving things, other devices over to access points, the network became stable. And so let me show you what I did. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. While I got you here, while we take a little peek there, uh, why don't we just go ahead and have you subscribe right now because uh, you're not gonna wanna miss some of the videos I have coming up. So, all right, so I'm in my upstairs hallway, as you guys have seen before when I just showed you my cologne display behind me. All right, and so this is my network closet and now, I do need to, you know, rewire things, and I'm gonna change it up on my vacation to make it uh, a lot cleaner, but for now, it's the best I could do, because I kept adding things, and as I kept adding things, uh, it became more and more, uh, more and more filled, okay? And so, this is what I have in this closet. All right, so I hope the lighting's good enough. I'm, I'm, hey, Google, turn on the upstairs light. Let's see if this helps. All right, so hopefully that helps there. So what I have here is my the router that came with my CenturyLink internet, okay? I have on top of that, and again, I ran out of room, so I will eventually add shelves, and you can see the mess of wires that I have here. Uh, luckily, I have two monitors here that cover up a lot of the other wires, but there is just so many devices here that I have that eventually I will do a new video showing this stuff all cleaned up and wire loomed and looking great. But for now, I just want to show you guys what I have. So naturally you have your internet, your CenturyLink uh, modem, which I have this in transparent bridge. And I'm using this one right here. That's my robust ASUS router, okay? And that's basically handling the IP assi assignment. Uh, that's actually um, uh, because this, I have this set to wireless bridge mode. And so this is actually handing out um, all the IP addresses for my network, okay? 
uh, using with the DCHP, I believe it's called. Uh, next to the router, or on top of the router, this is something called the Finge Box. And what this device does is this, through the app, detects anything that may connect to my network and gives me real-time notifications. Uh, this eventually will be located somewhere where I can see it in my office. I just haven't done that because I need to run, I need to add a gigabyte switch over there. Otherwise, I'm going to be bottlenecking my network or my desktop computer because that's all I have right here is these two fast port switches, one by D-Link and the other one by uh, Netgear. And they're only, uh, they'll, they're not gigabit ready. They're just 100, 100 megabit. All right, so I have all those wired devices on, right? And I'm not going to go through all of them. But then next to it, I have uh, Western Digital Network Attached Storage with my cloud, four terabytes with a four terabyte backup next to that with the MyBook. Uh, you have your uh, Samsung SmartThings Hub. You have this bad boy right here. It's the Asus uh, AC68U. This is a dual band um basically access point if you can convert it to an access point a Wi-Fi repeater I have it hardwired in an access access point point mode where I'm broadcasting an additional uh, 2.5 and 5 is it two, yeah 2.5 and 5 gigahertz uh, second SSID okay so on my network I have a total of uh, hang on, give me a second one two three four one two three four five SSIDs. So we have the repeaters, we have the primary SSID of the network, which is handling all the devices that come in and out of the house, such as like smartphones, tablets. They connect to that, whether it be 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. And of course, this device I use to handle the LifeX bulb. So any LifeX bulb I have, uh, any other device uh, like my tablet that's wall mounted downstairs, my iPad I did with the in-wall dock, a lot of the things that are going to be in the house that do not come and go I keep main, uh, maintained, always connected to this, okay? So the event that I have an issue, I can reboot this access point only. So, and this has been a great device. I got that really cheap on eBay. Some guy was getting rid of it. He didn't use it, uh, so I got a great deal. Uh, come up here, I have the Amazon. Um, this is your Echo Connect. What this does is when I receive a phone call, and I need to reconfigure it because whenever I receive a phone call it will ring on the Alexa's in the house you can answer it on the Alexa and you can actually make phone calls using the Alexa this is hooked up to an UMA VoIP phone system so these two work together and so I can basically make and receive calls using the Alexa answer the calls with the UMA again here's two Zomato monitors or two monitors they're hooked up to my network attached uh, Zomato um, uh, uh, NVRs one is PPoE, is power over Ethernet for uh, four cameras. The other one handles uh, the Wi-Fi cameras uh, that are throughout the entire uh, yard and house. Again, a phone here. This is hooked up to the UMA. Behind these monitors, there's a magic jack, which another phone line is off to the side. You can't see it. And, of course, coming all the way up to the top here, this is an old um, uh, Linksys router. Okay, this is the Linksys WRT54G. And what I've used this for, this is another access point that I'm broadcasting on a separate frequency, only 2.4 gigahertz. And this one I use as a hidden SSID. And what that does is I connect devices that I've gotten that are more of the, what I would consider lower end uh, smart home devices, such as uh, the Sonoff uh, switches that I got for five bucks. I found that the Sonoff switches, and I don't really know if it was a factor with, um, I don't really know if it was a factor. Well, here, let me just go back here. So there it is. That's what I got there. Now, I'm not going to give you, bring you around the house. I'm just showing you what's in the network closet. And I'm going to bring you back to the office where I can kind of talk to you about it uh, for a couple more minutes before we close on this, okay? And so, um, what my idea was, bring you back to me here. What my idea was and what I did was because I was having such an issue with things losing connection, especially the sewn off switches. I mean, they're great. They're $5.00. You wire them into an extension cord, you cut the cord, and you have a Wi-Fi enabled device that you can hook up lamps to. You can't dim them, but you can hook up anything up to 1800 watts, I believe it was. So I have like my fireplace hooked up to it, uh, the electric fireplaces. I have uh, some of the cheaper devices, such as like those smart bulbs that uh, use like the Magic Home app, which doesn't make them cheap, but I just have those separate from my LifeX bulbs. Um, you know, it's an easier way for me to kind of figure out if I'm having an issue where it's coming from. Uh, so what I did is I connected all those slower devices, and real, let's face it, all those devices need a signal to turn on or off. And so I use all my sewn off devices, any of those inexpensive RGB Wi-Fi controllers off eBay for five bucks, all the really what I would consider inexpensive Wi-Fi devices, 
I hook up to that and it's been rock solid. So I use that one for those devices. I use the primary router for like any, my cell phone or tablets or, or my television, anything that's gonna need some speed to stream, the Chromecast, the audio components are off the main router. And then the other access point, the other ASUS I showed you that was glowing red, that one there I've hooked up to that are, are devices like the LifeX bulbs, um, the, uh, my FUBA, the environment monitor, stuff like that, that basically never leave the house um, the connection's always on, they're always connected, and since I did all that, the only device I have an issue with is my View doorbell, uh, which they were nice enough to sponsor that. It's a View doorbell slash people with a monitor. I did that video. Check out all my other smart home products. You can check out each one of these devices in detail. That one goes offline uh, at a certain time of day, and it comes back online. And it's a brief moment, but it does it on the dot every day. I think it's just something built into the device. You can't change the settings, but that's the only issue I've had. Everything else is rock solid now. And so if you're having any kind of issues with connectivity and things, uh, you know, staying connected, uh, you know, definitely drop me a comment. I'll give you my best advice on what to do and where to go forward. Uh, now that router I showed you, the WRT54G, that I flashed the firmware to DDRT. So that opens up a whole bunch of different options on that. And those, those routers can get dirt cheap. So if you're having an issue, you know, with smart home stuff, you might find those at your local, like, you know, um, you know, uh, what do you call them? Like the local, uh, come on, Salvation Army, those kinds of places where, you know, people don't really buy that stuff anymore. And I picked mine up when it was actually new for like 30 bucks. So, you know, definitely check it out. I can help you in any way I can. And so that's what's in my network closet. So guys, if you have a lot of the smart home stuff and you have tons of devices, let me know what you guys have. Let's share the information uh, to, you know, help people who, you know, as, as technology gets better and better, these devices get cheaper and cheaper and more and more devices are smart or Wi-Fi enabled. It's gonna pose more of a problem on our network. And so let me know what you guys think. Tell me your experience with it. Tell me your problems. Let's share this information and make this a great discussion to help people get all these Wi-Fi enabled devices connected and working properly. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel. As always, have a wonderful day, guys. Take care.